Your Honour, and in spite of what this event claims to be, I'm not actually a researcher. Woo! I am a recruitment and conversion manager! I know, I know, you can barely believe it that right now, you are looking directly at someone who became the thing you dreamt of being when you were five. <laughs> what can I say? Some of us just make it. <laughs> my sister once asked me what my job was because she can't dream big enough. And um, so without getting too much into the technicalities, I just said, well, you know, I'm one of those people that tries to find people who want to study at university, convince them that Lancaster is the place they should study, get them to apply, and then, you know, come and do their degree. To which she said, ah, you work in sales and marketing. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that moment right there, yeah, that's exactly when five-year-old me, who'd had such big dreams for this career, died. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm actually what some people in the business like to call a non-academic staff. <laughs> when I say some people in the business like to call me that, it's not other non-academic <laughs> staff. <laughs> yeah, you see, what's generally more common in life is that people are described as what they are. <laughs> what they're not. <laughs> so, you know, for example... Um, I'm not describing you guys as 95% non-murderer. <laughs> Non-academic. I think what you'll actually find is I am a member of professional services. <laughs> now, I yes, cannot yes. tell you when it was that we stopped being admin or support and ascended to the lofty heights of professional services. <laughs> is that someone looked at the two largest camps of workers at the university and said, well, there's the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's, yeah, uh, those ones. <laughs> I mean, it does seem like a bit of a slap in the face to my academic colleagues, because, you know, there is that, oh, wait, no, there is that property lecturer who generally sniggers every single time the phrase erection of buildings is said. <laughs> Not ideal as a property lecturer. Then <laughs> there's also that professor in the management school who thinks it's appropriate to welcome international delegates dressed head to toe in hiking gear, like he's just come back from a little trek at Scorf Alpine. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Guests and dignitaries. So yeah, the professionals and the non-professionals. <laughs> so the area that I lead in generally requires quite a lot of input from the non-professionals. Um, and as a general rule, they try to pretend that what they're here for is their passion, like their real love and desire for things like bees, and efficiency, and Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> that they want to do homework on it for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Some of them keep this pretense up so long that they become what's called an emeritus professor. <laughs> now, to the rest of us, what that means is they've retired from being a professor but they still want to do more homework. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but what kid at school runs home at the end of the day and is like, Woo! More homework! I can't wait to do more school in my house! Why are they not throwing their bag on the floor, grabbing the remote and running to find out what the twins are up to on Funhouse? That's literally the crazy show where anything can go. If you don't get that reference, you're either too young, too old, or you weren't allowed to watch ITV as a child. <laughs> like my husband. Because I married up, you see. <laughs> so anyway, they do claim that they're here for their passions and for the research and, you know, the bees. Um, but really, what they're actually here for and what their true passion is is the admin 
<laughs> they absolutely cannot get enough of all that extra stuff that's wrapped around their lovely patterns. <laughs> They really look forward to the days as well when they get to like join forces with the professionals. Like, you know, I have to get involved and, and do an event and I don't know, maybe, maybe actually feel like they too are a professional for a day. Um, and so well, generally they might do this um, at a university open day where we'll get them to market their wares to 17 year olds who, by the way, are absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Today's 17-year-olds have basically known what they wanted to do at university for years already. They have looked at university entrance requirements and the A-levels that are needed, and then they've picked their GCSEs on that basis. You pick your GCSEs when you're 13. 13. Like, imagine having your shit that together when you're 13, <laughs> that you know that you want to study politics with a minor in sociology at a top 10 institution. <laughs> they knew that at 13, or at least that's what the UCAS statement tells us. <laughs> so there are the days, the university open days, where we join forces the professional and the non-professional together. And we have these open days. And you know, what's not to love? You know, an open day is basically just a party with like a few thousand people walking around a Parkland campus, sharing with them all of our best marketing messages. Come for the 24-hour library. Stay for the infinite homework. <laughs> And because the non-professionals have such a passion for combining forces and working these events, my job is like super easy. And so I obviously have to engage with these colleagues in order to get their input and staffing details and who's going to work the event. And obviously I do this in the form of email, um, generally sending them an email saying request for staffing information. Now, what you might not know about university open days, or maybe you do if you're in the business, is they're generally on Saturdays. Now, I don't know about other industries because, you know, I'm in the library tower of the university, but once you've done a full five days of work, the idea of also them working on a Saturday doesn't really strike or inspire much joy in people. However, the passion that's felt so deeply about the wonders of open days is that when I send my email with a request for staffing information, there is literally a tidal wave-like response to give me the information I need. <laughs> no, that was a dream. Um, no one replies to those emails. No one wants to tell me who wants to give up the eighth Saturday of this year to work yet another open day. <laughs> it's fine though, I can wait. I'll just wait. And wait. <laughs> I'm a professional. <laughs> I can wait, this is totally fine. Right, okay, we've got a problem. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to reach out to the senior non academics. And I'm going to ask them for some hints and tips. You see, because the problem we have here is that 40% of people haven't replied. And, I mean, that's almost half. I am no statistician or mathematician, but 40%, that's almost half. 40% of people have not replied. Um, and we cannot run this event with, like, almost half of the staff not there. So I asked them what I should do. You know, I'm getting quite worried. And, um, yeah, my senior non-academic staff then say, oh, Maybe if you change the subject line, <laughs> just it up a little bit, and maybe, maybe then they'd open your email and they'd be like super excited to respond all of a sudden. <laughs> Saturday would be a nothing. It would just be a joy because they've read your subject line. <laughs> all right, I'll give it a go. <sighs> what will I change it to? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I am going to have to become one of those people, aren't I? I am going to become one of those people. The people that forwards their email and starts it as per my email below. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I am going to be. I am going to be that person. And it's all, you know, that very mean, so very British problem because I'm going to have to do it. I can't just write, fucking reply, you fucking fucks. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
I can't do that. I have to be the meme. I have to be the very British problem because I have to be oh so polite, oh so British, and oh I just cannot face another conversation with HR about the appropriateness of swearing in emails. <laughs> so what will I change the subject line to? What can I change requests for stuff and information to that will appeal to the non-professionals? <laughs> Congratulations on your successful funding application. <laughs> what your PowerPoint presentation now says about you. <laughs> Have you seen this video of a duck? <laughs> it's not going to work, is it? Like, the subject line is not going to change anything. This is just a nonsense. I'm going to have to do something else. I think I'm going to have to go beyond emails. I don't even know what... But what's be... I'm going to have to mess with my teams. <laughs> no, no, I could phone them. I could phone them. I'll phone them. No, I don't want to do that. That's gross. <laughs> I could go to their office in person and just have a nice little chat. I'll never be in their offices. <laughs> no, that's it. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I am just not going to be oh so polite. And I'm not going to be oh so British. I'm just going to change this subject line. And I bet you people will open. Fuck you, you fucking fucks. Reply to my emails. <laughs> <laughs> After all, it will be lovely to see my friends in HR again. 